Hi guys, Mr. Bestell here, and I'm here to guide you through Rock Transformations Lesson 2.1, exploring how magma and sediment form. So let's start with the warm-up. Okay, the purpose of this warm-up is just to refresh um, what you already know about magma and sediment. So where do you think magma comes from? We know it's deep in the earth, but how do you create it? And where does sediment come from? Remember, sediment is little pebbles or pieces of sand. And this third question is pretty much asking the same thing, nearly. Instead of where does it come from, how do you think it forms, which is nearly the same question. So let's go to the sim. Um, so we're going to open the rock transformation simulation and make sure it's in process mode. And we're trying to figure out, oops, wrong one. Let's open it again. We're trying to figure out how to form sediment and how to form magma. So let's just let that load. Okay, got it. We are in process mode, so we're good. So we're trying to create, how do we actually make sediment here? You're not allowed to click add sediment. And how do we create new magma? So see if you can figure out how to do that. Well, let's try some stuff. Um, let's try this first one here. Does weather help oh, I, I gotta click on the green so if I add weather did I make new sediment looks like it it's coming down so we got some new sediment without actually clicking add sediment because that's cheating and We're not allowed to use this button, so let's click here. Let's click melt. I have to melt this region. And I actually did make some, some new magma. If I analyze it, it says magma. So kind of write down what you did there. Um, this is basically doing something th basically the same or similar. So when did you see magma being formed? When you added energy from Earth's interior or when you added energy from the sun? Well, let's see. Let's reset. Um, the question was, you saw magma being formed when you added, was it energy from the sun or was it energy from Earth's interior to create the magma? And you saw sediment being formed when, was it energy from the sun or energy from Earth's interior? Which are again here and here. What new rock formations did you see when the landscape was only exposed to energy from the interior? So this one. What new rock formations did you see? And what new for rock formations did you see when you only had energy from the sun, which causes weather, which causes rain? It's being a bit repetitive here. So in both these cases, you're using energy, um, which is the ability to make things move or change. Sometimes the energy is from the center of Earth, inside Earth, and sometimes the energy comes from outside Earth, in this case, the sun. And this last little bubble. There is a difference between weathering and erosion. So weathering is when rock is broken down into smaller pieces, and that can happen because of wind, rain, uh, but in more cases, um, rivers, moving water, and oceans, of course. Oceans just hitting rocks over and over until they become sand, excuse me. 
But erosion is when the sediment moves. Not that it's breaking down more, but when it moves. Um, but it can be caused by the same things like wind and water. And wind and water are created because of the sun. So wind is created because of difference in temperatures, which is created by the sun. And the water cycle is powered by the sun. So I'm going to play a video for you guys. Looking at rocky landforms, you might think they've always been the same, but they're actually always changing. These rolling hills were once very different. Millions of years ago, they were jagged peaks. The surface of Earth is constantly transformed by a process called weathering, where energy from the sun causes rock to break down into smaller and smaller pieces. But the sun doesn't melt or break the rock directly. The process is more complicated than that. The sun's energy warms the ocean and liquid water evaporates into water vapor in the air. Then the water vapor condenses into clouds and falls as rain or snow. Energy from the sun also warms the atmosphere, making air move around as wind. Together, the moving water and air interact with Earth's surface, causing weathering. Here are some examples of how this can happen. Wind can blow small rock particles over landforms, slowly wearing down the rock. In the mountains, frozen water falls as snow and forms glaciers that are like huge rivers of ice. The ice grinds against mountain rock, slowly carving valleys. Water from rain and melting snow forms fast-moving rivers. River water bounces rocks around, causing them to bump into each other and break into smaller and smaller pieces. Through this process, giant boulders can break down into tiny pieces of sand. Broken down rock is called sediment. Sediment is moved around by the same wind and water that created it. This process of moving sediment is called erosion. Erosion happens in many ways. Rivers can move sediments downstream. Wind can blow sediment to a new location. And rain can cause landslides that move sediment downhill. Now you know how energy from the sun causes weathering and erosion on Earth. So as the video showed, there's lots of ways that the sun can both break down rock, which is weathering, and also cause rock to move, which is erosion. Um, in part three is a little modeling tool called weathering and melting, excuse me, which is right here. And there's not too many things that you have to move around, but should weathering go here, here, or here? And once you put it somewhere, I'll just put it in the wrong place. Um, does weathering come from Earth's interior or from the sun? And does melting go here, here, or here? I'll put it in the wrong place. Melting does not happen in the surface. Um, but does melting happen in, from Earth's interior, the energy source, or does it happen from the sun? This one's tricky. Does melting go here or here? That's not that easy. And the last part of today is um, watching the video again. And the question is, your friend tells you that sunlight breaks rock into smaller pieces which is not true. Using what you learned from the video, revise this statement explaining how the process is more complicated than that. So the sun doesn't directly break rock down, but there's always a step in between. How does the sun indirectly break rock down into smaller pieces? You should watch the video again. Uh, and I forgot to say for part three, you have to upload an image if possible. Upload your answer. Hope that's helpful and stay safe out there, guys.